This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Bover. Why are we getting the intense music already? My dreams are always the same. But not today. Oh, or is this Sachi's end? Today I dreamed of a girl in a small dim room, weeping and wailing. Never mind, this is Yuji. When I squinted my eyes against the darkness, I realized that the girl cowering on the floor was Sachi. Sachi! But not the Sachi I know. Her legs were locked in thick chains, binding her to a massive ball of iron. She couldn't stand. Couldn't even drag herself along the rough floor. Even so, she struggled and squirmed, desperately trying to escape the heavy fetters biting into her flesh. But no matter how hard she tried, the cold iron wouldn't yield. Every twist and turn only brought more anguish. In the end, she stopped trying. Sachi was sealed in that gloomy prison with no chance of escape, and I was powerless to help her. I could only watch her, exhausted and hopeless, slowly wasting away. Oddly enough, I'm freed from that despairing nightmare by the same thing that announced its arrival. The sound of Sachi screaming. <laughs> oh, wow, CG. Was not expecting this. The ear-splitting shriek jolts me awake, adrenaline coursing from my veins. <laughs> Twisting to my side, I immediately understand that the final scream was all too real. <laughs> Sachi's clutching at her arms as if to embrace herself. Her clenched teeth audibly chatter against each other. Hold on. This is... It doesn't take long for me to realize the abnormality of the situation. Sachi admitted that she's been having nightmares lately, and I knew they were leaving her dispirited and exhausted. As of yesterday, the situation didn't seem like an outright emergency, but these symptoms are all too clearly something else entirely. She's experiencing pain and terror well beyond what a mere bad dream can offer. Sachi's eyes are wide open, tears streaming relentlessly down her cheeks, a contorted grimace frozen on her face. It's the expression of a human being forcibly shown a gruesome memory like they'd nothing more to forget <laughs> they'd like nothing more to, than to forget. <laughs> Even as these alarming thoughts run through my head, Sachi continues to grind out apologies like a broken wind-up toy. Damn! I don't know exactly what she's seen right now or what triggered her to suddenly enter this state. But whatever the answer to these questions may be, I can't allow this to continue even a second longer. Hey, Sachi! Wake up! I shout her name at point-blank range to no effect. She continues to mutter deliriously, staring right through me. Sachi, snap out of it! Sachi! Even when I shake her by the shoulder almost too vigorously, the light doesn't return to her clouded eyes. Damn it! What do I do? How do I make her hear my voice? Ooh. Intense CG. In the end, only one thing comes to mind. Wrapping my arms around Sachi, I envelop her in a gentle hug. It's alright. It's alright. Keeping my voice as calm as possible, I whisper reassuring words in her ear. Just like my master used to do for me. Using that simple warmth of my body, more real than words can ever be, I speak directly to Sachi's heart. In time, Sachi's previously frantic breathing begins to slow, and the violent trembling of her body gradually subsides. Man, which thumbnail to use? Finally regaining her consciousness, Sachi looks up at me with the eyes of a disoriented child. You alright, Sachi? You were having a nightmare until just a second ago. A pretty terrible one. <laughs> that dream? When I try to prod the conversation forward, Sachi avoids the subject with a forced attempt at humor. Hold it, Sachi. I reach out and catch Sachi's arm as she tries to flee. What's torturing you like this? 
ちょっと怖い夢を見ただけですから。The girl's doing her best to put up a tough front, but she's still too visibly shaken for it to be halfway convincing. That's a lie. The way you were screaming just now? That wasn't just a bad dream. Mumbling resigned words in a wry tone of voice, Sachi turns back to face me, then slowly lowers herself to a sitting position on my bed. In other words, I was on the money. I see. This is one of those times where being right isn't particularly pleasant. I've been so damn pleased with myself for saving Sachi. Self-centered as it may be, this feels like some cosmic slap to the face. Like someone's telling me, you haven't saved anyone yet. There's a sharp, bitter stab of pain somewhere deep in my chest. No. You don't need to apologize for that. I understand that she couldn't bring herself to volunteer the truth out of concern for me. <sighs> to criticize her for that, you'd have to be an oblivious asshole or a genuine sadist. But I do want to know what's making you suffer like this. Stopping in mid-sentence, Sachi lightly bites her lower lip. From the expression on her face, just thinking about it must be enough to send some painful images flashing through her head. <laughs> You're like the third person to ask me this, this stream. I know what they wrote on the reports, at least. Not much more. From what I read, a drunk driver ran a red light on the road outside of the park where the two of us used to play, hitting your parents at full speed. Survived, but fell into a persistent vegetative state. She's still hospitalized to this day. Are you telling me you've been reliving the precise moment you witnessed that accident over and over? So, ゴムが焼ける嫌な匂いもいつまでもアイドリングを続けるトラックのエンジン音。鮮明に感じられますから。でも私が本当に怖いのはたった一つの言葉なんです。A word. That would be worse than dying instantly, still being conscious after it. それは私にとってとても。It's not what you wanted to say, but it's understandable why she would think that. たかがピオイのベッドで目を覚ましたと。お母さんが助かったと聞かされて最初に怖いって思ってしまったんです。大人らよかったってそう思うはずなのに。もしお母さんが目を覚ましたらその口から私を憎むような言葉が出るんじ
した後もずっとお見舞いにすら行けなくて That's understandable. It's it would be super hard to visit your mom in a state like that. お父さんやお母さんから恨まれないような子に少しでもいい子にならなくちゃって I don't think Sachi has ever shared these feelings with anyone else. In parallel to this cascade of raw, honest emotion, a constant stream of tears flows down her cheeks. That's enough. As words finally fail her, I embrace her troubling body. I'm sorry for making you talk about something you didn't want to remember. See, it's parts like this where I really enjoy the game. I really enjoy the story of the game when it's focused on stuff like this. A little after the sun begins to peek above the horizon, Sachi lifts her face from my chest and smiles at me. You're not lying this time, are you? That's important. All right. Determining that her smile is not artificially plastered on her face, I slowly release Sachi's body. Aw, that's cute. This blatant attempt at flattery isn't going to earn you any head padding. That a fact? Hi. Feeling the warmth of the person you love is a comfortable, calming thing, enough to make you want to forget all the rest. That said, I can't just let the discussion from before drop. I hesitate awkwardly, unsure how to proceed. But after a moment of silence, Sachi resolves my dilemma by speaking first. Punishment? お父さんとお母さんが私に冷たくなったことはお話ししたと思いますが、事故が起こったあの日、お父さんとお母さんはそれまでが嘘のように優しかったんです。アフェクションだ、はい。あの日、私が目を覚ますと、いつも聞こえ
And from the sound of things, she's still blaming herself even now. The tone of her voice is almost resigned, as if accepting her responsibility. But that doesn't mean she's come to terms with what happened. She simply despaired of ever finding forgiveness. The proof is written on her face. Even as Sachi speaks calmly of the past, her expression is filled with bitter regret. Alright, I understand where this is coming from. But there's still one thing I don't get. Up until just recently, I'm pretty sure you weren't having daily nightmares, let alone traumatic flashbacks. What happened? Do you have any idea why they've gotten so bad? それは多分今の私が幸せを感じているからなんだと思います。私がフラッシュバックに悩まされていたのは事故の直後がほとんどで、いい子でいようと決めた後はフラッシュバックも悪夢を見る回数も徐々に減ってきていたんです。でもこの
Personally, I don't think there's any reason you need to be tied down by the past any longer. That's right. Keeping that in mind, I'm going to tell you the way to get rid of those nightmares. They're giving you so much trouble. What you do with that knowledge is up to you. What, you don't believe what I'm telling you? Guess it might be hard for you to believe, having lived with that guilt for so long. That said, I really don't think you need to drag it around anymore. And I'm not lying about knowing a way out. That's right. There's only one thing for you to do about these nightmares. Kill the source. Well, that was a little vaguely worded. But he's right. Find the source of the nightmares. Get rid of it. Sachi's got issues. Every, every character in this game has issues. Also, every human being in uh, living on the Earth has issues. Oh, we get Sachi's perspective now. To end my persistent nightmares, I need only kill the source. Five days after Yukun spoke those words to me, I've arrived in the town where I spent the earliest years of my life. I'm here to pay a visit to my mother, sleeping even now in the local hospital. Oh, she's actually going to visit! In this, as in so many other things, I was guided by Yukun's advice. There's only one thing for you to do about these nightmares. Kill the source. <laughs> That's right. Your sin won't be forgiven. It's just not possible. So if you want to free yourself from this guilt, you've got no choice but to eliminate its source. There's also this great thing called, um, Mercy, Grace, Forgiveness. I'm not telling you to kill anybody. That's up to you. Yuji! You suck! Why are you wording it like this? You know she has a hard time interpreting people's instru- Oh, this better not go where I think it's going. I'm telling you to kill. That's- Bruh! 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 That phrase right there. Right there. That one. <laughs> Really? <laughs> That's it. You've got plenty of options, and there's more than one answer here. You use the wrong word, bruh. I can't make that decision for you. You have to do this yourself. UG, you, you, you suck. Presented with this new problem, I began with a serious consideration of the word kill. Great! This is not going well at all. Interpreting it literally, because of course she does, he was telling me to deprive someone of their life, to cause death. Don't do that. From there, I could only find two plausible answers. The first, as had immediately occurred to me, was to kill my mother. No, that's bad. Second was to kill myself. That's also bad to end my own life. But even now, I'm not confident that I correctly identified the options of which Yukun spoke. I think he was talking about a metaphorical kill. I think it was more about dealing with the root of your problems. True, killing my mother might put an end to my fear of her final question. What? This is so bad. And if I die, I'll no longer even be capable of suffering or feeling guilt. That's what you think. But fundamentally, I can't help feeling that the act of killing itself is an extremely, a very extreme way of approaching these problems. Yes, I'm pretty sure he was talking about it. Figuratively. But also, he was not helping his case by using that exact word and saying, interpret it as you will. Bruh, you could get arrested for that, for incitement to violence. Killing my mother would make me a criminal, and killing myself would mean leaving this world behind. In either case, of course, I would no longer be with Yukun. If these were the answers he wanted me to find, the, uh, was Yukun lying when he said that he loved me? My thoughts ran in circles, and before I knew it, five days had flown by, and I was no closer to an answer. In the end, Yukun was unable to hold his silence. No matter what decision you're going to make, you should see your mother first. I think you're capable of that now, Sachi. 
It's only been a few hours since he spoke those words. You should see your mother. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. The moment I heard his proposal, my heart flooded heavily in my breast. Since the day of the accident, my mother has never spoken, never opened her eyes. She's been reduced to a living symbol of my indelible sin. And if Mom really does resent me, she might not even want to see my face. These very thoughts have kept me from visiting her for many years now. Not to say that the visits I paid her in those first few weeks were worthy of the name, since that horrible day I have never once managed to spend any real time with her. Perhaps Uncle Akihiro understood how I felt. He didn't challenge me on the matter, or even encourage me to make the trip. In that case, there, were no, there was no real reason for me to visit that hospital, or so I allowed myself to believe. In truth, I've just been making selfish excuses. I was running away from my own mother. That neglect is proof enough that I never really overcame my guilt toward her. I was simply hiding from it. As long as I permit myself that cowardice, it may well be impossible to find a meaningful answer to my current dilemma. And so I resolved to face what I had refused to acknowledge for so long. Or, choice free, Yuji is full of it. <laughs> Which is the correct answer. Of course, speaking the question out loud doesn't get me any closer to an answer. Yukun's always three or four steps ahead of me, thinking on a far higher level. This puzzle must have, have meaning, and I want very badly to reach the answer he found. Yuji, you suck. But even so, I must admit I find myself disturbed. Yes, you should be disturbed! Merely speaking the word kill leaves a bitter aftertaste on my tongue and a sharp ache in my stomach. She's going on her own, too. This is, this is brave of her. Head canon, this nurse is Ryo Fushibayashi. After filling out some paperwork at the nurse station, I'm provided with directions to my mother's sickbed. I know that didn't sound like Ryo's voice at all, but... The procedure hasn't changed. Neither is Mom's hospital room. Everything is exactly the same as it was on that day. At one point, a nurse I recognize from my time here calls out to me, Is that you, Sachan? Will you be alright alone, dear? I answer with a polite, yes, I'll be fine, and proceed down the hallway without breaking my stride. But when I finally arrive in front of my mother's hospital room, my breath catches in my throat. And with that as a signal, my previously functional legs abruptly turn to clumsy, leaden stumps. My head begins to throb violently. Uh-oh. It's been many years now. Maybe it won't hurt like it did back then. I was a fool to believe such nonsense for even a moment. My body knows that something painful waits behind that door. And it's not shy about registering its objections. Mom's anguished, bloodied face flashes unbidden before my eyes, and before I know it, I've begun to hyperventilate. <laughs> Gradually, even standing grows perilously difficult, and I find myself leaning heavily against the corridor wall. <laughs> Nurse to the rescue! Apparently sensing something of the desperation I feel from the expression on my face, the nurse kindly withdraws. To tell the truth, I don't even remember what I said to her just now. Just keeping myself conscious is taking every ounce of effort I can muster. Trying very hard to convince myself of that, I forcefully throw open the door of the room, letting the momentum carry me stumbling inside. Oh boy. Instantly, my eyes find my mother's face, peeking out from above the sterile white sheet covering her lower body. But the person sleeping in that bed is utterly unlike the mom, who remains so clearly in my memories. Her cheeks are thin to the point of emaciation. The color of her skin is as pale and waxy as that of a corpse. Yeah, that would be hard to visit. And yet seeing her transformed like this brings back, with astonishing clarity, that awful moment when I was first guided into the intensive care unit. The first time I saw what had become of her. She lay there in a nest of unfamiliar machines. 
A huge oxygen mask covered her mouth. Her body was pierced with IV needles. Medical tubing connected her to, her to strange electronic equipment. And even as the machines hissed and clicked around her, my mother simply lay there. So still, it seemed that she'd been transformed to stone. When I saw her there, I remember feeling the same way I do now. She isn't the mom I knew anymore, and she never will be again. Yeah, that, that is a horrible situation. <laughs> I hope that that was just her imagination that said that, and not an actual person. Oh, yeah, that's a nightmare. <laughs> this is definitely difficult to watch. But a different kind of difficult from what this usually is. The words echo forcefully through my head, as though someone's drilled a hole into my skull and whispered them directly into my brain. Cold sweat seeps from my forehead. My stomach begins to contract spasmatically with an ominous creaking growl. <laughs> There's a familiar sensation of warmth draining steadily from my body. It's the same chill that usually accompanies the onset of my flashbacks. Tears roll in neat lines down my face, so cold I expect them to freeze against my cheeks. It's fortunate that I didn't eat anything before this trip. Had I chosen to stop for lunch, I'd likely be vomiting it up right about now. That was the usual conclusion to my visits. In the old days, I would empty my stomach, a nurse would come running up, and that would be that. But today is different. Today, no one ushered me in here. I came of my own free will, resolved to face this. Yukun told me that I should see my mother. That advice was an implicit affirmation of his trust in me. He believes I'm capable of this visit. I can't give up now. It's simply not an option. I've come this far to put an end to my nightmares. I won't allow myself to turn back. <laughs> Cleaning with all the stubborn determination I can muster to that simple decision, I somehow managed to hold myself together for the worst of it. And eventually, through an enormous effort of will, I'm able to shakily lower myself into the folding chair that sits at the side of the bed. Oh, it's this psalm. I love this psalm. I've been waiting for it to come on. This is, wow. This is very sad. How many hours have passed since I collapsed into this chair? Well, it's sunset now, so quite a few. It feels like only moments ago, but the sun's already sinking low into the sky. The unlighted room's illuminated by a warm orange glow from the window behind me. Now that I think about it more carefully, it must have taken nearly an entire hour to calm myself to the point where I could gaze at Mom's face like this. But it's been many hours since then, and I've gone no further. No words, no movement. I've spent the afternoon glued to this chair like a statue. I'm finally able to visit my mother. I can finally look her in the face again. There should be so many things to say, so many things to tell her, to ask her. But now that I'm actually gazing down on her lined, impassive face, the words have betrayed me. They've melted into thin air, leaving no trace by which I might find them. At long last, I'm able to speak a single word. Is it a greeting or a half-spoken question? I'm not sure myself. There is, of course, no response. Mom's in a deep coma because of the traumatic damage her brain sustained in that traffic accident. She hasn't answered a question or even spoken a word in many years now. My mother's doctor once said that the odds of her ever regaining consciousness were lower than my chances of hitting the jackpot in a national lottery. In other words, barring a miracle, she'll live out the rest of her days like this. A persistent, vegetative state. This is her life now. Incapable of movement, let alone feeding herself. Kept alive on the whims of others like a potted plant. This is the life I gave to my own mother. 
with that thought, the nausea that had subsided earlier swells up within me once more. <laughs> Suffering comes to me in unpredictable waves, with all the random malevolence of a curse. Weary and numb, I observe my own pain through a curious sense of detachment, and I reach my first real conclusion of the day. By visiting my mother for the first time in many years, by directly facing my guilt in its most raw and undiluted form, he wanted to make me realize this. That so long as I live, I'll never simply be released from the suffering. My father's dead, my mother's sleeping, and she's never going to wake up. That's reality. This status quo isn't going to abruptly change for the better. All my guilt, all my attempts at atonement, no matter how sincere, they can never overturn what's come to pass. This is not the proper way to be going about this, but... Perhaps you can simply wanted me to recognize anew how truly crushing the weight of my sin really is. This wasn't your fault! Good grief! <laughs> the answer isn't so complicated after all. Mom's the fountain of this guilt, and I'm the vessel that willingly accepts it. We're mutual culprits in these nightmares. So long as the two of us continue to cooperate, my suffering will go on indefinitely. That's not a logical conclusion to go for. In that case, I... I have to kill myself. I have to kill my... Both of these options suck! Both of these options are terrible! I hate it when visual levels do this, where it's like, Oh, do you want to make this bad decision, or do you want to make this bad decision? I have to kill myself, or I have to kill Mom. I have to pick one of those? Yes. Those are the only two options, apparently. It's it's very, very binary, apparently. Oh, are you kidding me? After we actually are on the route, this is the one decision we actually get, and it's terrible. Seriously? Okay, I, I know exactly where the game is going with this. I know exactly where the game is going with this, and I don't like it. Where I'm, I'm guess so I'm, I'm guessing this is what determines whether it's the good ending or the bad ending, and I'm pretty sure that telling Sachi to kill herself is not going to be the good ending. So from what I'm guessing is, kill myself means we get the bad ending. Kill mom is going to be the quote unquote good ending because we're probably going to be like putting her out of her suffering, which I don't agree with that. I do not agree with that at all. I don't believe that we have the right to determine who should live or die. This is terrible. I don't want to pick either of these decisions. Is there really no choice free? Seriously no choice free? Are you kidding me? This is terrible. This is really bad. Oh my gosh. Thanks, Yuji. Thanks for nothing, bro. Like, seriously, you did this. <laughs> you have led Sachi to this point. 